Uh, hello. I have a couple of uh, uh, reference pictures up there uh, on my screen. And uh, I've never drawn this animal before, so I, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it, but. Uh, what are we drawing today? Uh, I'm trying to draw uh, a Margazaurus. Um, which is uh, a dinosaur from the Cretaceous period. Because I, I just watched uh, a video of, on the channel uh, Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. And uh, near the very end, uh, the the, um, the guy, he, he was like, you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see paleo art of uh, a Margazaurus with uh, leaves and branches tangled in its uh, spines, <laughs> neck spines, after browsing. Yeah, I, I I thought that was a really good idea actually, and uh, and yeah, I this is what I'm drawing today. It's been a while since I've made a uh, paleo art, and I kind of missed it. Uh, from time to time, uh, I it's not like it's not that I forget I like things, but uh, I I'm so focused on other things that uh, some of my interests, special interests, gets uh, pushed aside for other things. I'm not entirely sure uh, what Argent Argentina looked like uh, in the Cretaceous uh, period. I'm, I'm aiming for uh, <laughs> safety uh, and drawing conifers and pines and stuff. I know flowers existed at this point, um, so I'm I, I'm putting a couple of them here and there, but I'm I don't want it to be uh, anything to to be blatantly anachronistic. I'm also putting a lot of broken uh, trees. I'm assuming there there has been some sort of flood or or fire recently. I don't. I'm gonna assume a flood. <laughs> you are, you might, you might, you might think, hey, uh, Johannes, you are drawing the thing. You should know what what, what happened here. But no, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm just going with the flow. So, uh. okay. So that thing had. Let me count on my reference picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine of th these things. Okay, so one, and they were uh, pointing backwards. Nine. Um, they have this shape where they go big and small again. Um, let's assume for a moment that they were a bit bigger because. Uh, the guy explains it very well in the video. Uh, uh, keratin uh, on top of uh, bones can make uh, longer horns or spines on living creatures. So I'm not sure how I'm going to draw the head because my references for the head are not great. You know what? I'm gonna <laughs> draw it uh, munching on some leaves. So I don't have to draw the <laughs> the jaw uh, because I'm not entirely sure how to draw it. Only the most chaotic paleo art here. If I don't know how to draw the thing and I don't want to research the thing for hours, I'm just gonna not show the thing. 
like do the your own version in your head so um entangled uh branches and stuff let's go i want uh, leaves a couple of small branches i don't want to go over the top with it but uh like like an entire bush <laughs> on top of it but uh some little leaves and stuffs it seems acceptable don't descript leaves as well because i don't want to be anachronistic okay uh, i think it's i think we're good so far and we are already drawing stuff that isn't in the original sketch because uh, again only the most chaotic paleo art here. My paleo art isn't a very precise when I do it anyway. I like to to err on the side of uh, not really dreamy watercolor, but I don't want to it to look too realistic because as soon as you aim for full realism and you get something wrong. It looks uh, worse than when you're aiming for something more uh, atmospheric. Like if you want to draw something uh, that looks very, very precise and scientific, uh, as soon as you get some a detail wrong, if you spent hours on it, it looks it's it's a bit sad because uh, you you. You should have uh, done your work beforehand if you wanted to spend three hours on a tree and a leaf, and uh, because that's what the end result looks like. It looks like you spend hours and hours on everything, and uh, if you draw something very quickly like this, and it doesn't look like a lot of time was spent on it. If you get something wrong, it, it, it it's bad. It's it's really bad. But at least it doesn't look ridiculous. Like the person didn't spend hours on something bad. At the very least, I'm not looking for excuses. I'm just saying it's more comfortable that way. Okay, so leaves. And if you don't know your sauropods, 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 oh, welcome back to Johannes can speak English. If you don't know them very well, uh, you might be wondering, hang on, what is up with these feet? What's, what's that? Um, turns out a lot of um, sauropods had really really strange uh, feet and uh, it may come as a surprise if you've always uh, seen them in uh, kids books uh, drawn with like elephantine feet and stuff uh, especially the front legs are very very not elephantine the back ones on some specimens look a bit different, uh, more like what you'd expect this kind of feet to look like. But the front ones uh, are like um, a glove, a strange glove, around a pillar of uh, bone structures uh it's it's really really hard to describe i'm gonna add a picture if i remember it uh, when i'm editing this but yeah uh, it looks really strange and um, it was apparently made to support the weight in an efficient way and a lot of uh, species had these strange uh, 
claw, uh, little nail or claw uh, sticking out like a thumb. We're not entirely sure why for some of them. Maybe it was to clean themselves, maybe, we don't know. That's also something I find really, really interesting uh, about uh, our modern uh, understanding of dinosaurs and how much it changed from back when I was a kid. There's a lot of uh, things we assumed that we know now, or for sure, or, or in fact we're completely wrong and uh, that we are correcting now. And uh, the mental picture I had of several of these animals uh, growing up was completely wrong. And uh, all the times it was pretty accurate, but some details changed. And uh, our, our understanding is never uh, perfect. And uh, and it changes with either new uh, specimens being discovered or uh, old ones re-evaluated or re-examined by someone else. And all of a sudden we understand new things or different things. And I think that's very important in uh, science in, or in life in general. To look at something that you took for granted and be like, okay, no, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't right. We were wrong and uh, this is more likely. And there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, it doesn't mean the people who, uh, who made the first uh, theory uh, or the first hypothesis, hypothesis, hypothesis. I know theory and hypothesis don't mean the th same thing in English, but it, one is very difficult to, to pronounce. <laughs> uh, sorry. It doesn't mean that the person who, who was wrong about something was dumb or anything. It was... It's just that uh, our understanding of things uh, got better. Which is also why I, like a lot of people, I'm very, very tired of people going, science is ruining dinosaurs. Uh, they are not scary anymore. No, uh, listen, first, dinosaurs aren't meant to be scary, first. Uh, they're not dragons, they're not uh, fantasy creatures, they are animals. Who existed on Earth, and uh, they are not Hollywood monsters made to to scare you. You you, you can love movies uh, that scare scare you with dinosaurs, but that's not why they exist in the first place. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's normal that we our understanding of them changes. And two, uh, I often see this argument uh, be when people talk about uh, feathered dinosaurs. Like, feathered raptor isn't scary. And uh, and also, real raptors are apparently smaller than the ones in Jurassic Park. Yeah, uh, about that. Have you ever uh, been chased by an angry swan? That, and uh, that's way smaller than a lot of velociraptors. So, um, <laughs> uh, was that scary? B b I think that's scary and... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, birds are scary. I don't know wh what makes you think birds aren't scary, but <laughs> they definitely are. Okay, um, I'm going to take a picture and then do the shading part. Uh, shadows, here we go. This is going to be pretty quick. I don't want this drawing to be too... I'm consuming. I'm mostly doing it uh, because I. It's not I. It's not that I'm hitting an, an some sort of artist block or anything. But uh, the things I'm currently working on, there's no uh, immediate uh, satisfaction. If that makes sense, uh, they are uh, very long-term projects and uh, uh, two uh, rather complicated uh, illustrations. I, I I love drawing. Uh, if uh, if internet didn't exist, uh, I would still spend all of my time, arguably maybe <laughs> more time, drawing stuff uh, 
be, how do I know this? Because uh, back when I didn't have uh, my own computer, uh, I I was I was basically drawing all the time when I was younger. Uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. If if I didn't have ac in internet access, uh, I I would still draw. But uh, there's a huge satisfaction in being able to scan a drawing and show it to friends and people and strangers going, look, I made this. <laughs> it's a very uh, basic form of satisfaction, like a, like a kid uh, running around holding a, a sheet of paper going, look, I, I drew this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's very... it makes me happy, so... When I have uh, too many things I can't share or that aren't finished yet, I tend to uh, make this kind of thing from time to time uh, with uh, something very simple and uh, very quick. And it's also good for my ner nerves because <laughs> uh, when things are very difficult to make, when they are very complicated, uh, I need stuff to relax, so <laughs> this this will do. Maybe I'm wrong uh, in, in putting uh, leaves uh, on it or making it chew leaves. Um, it, it, it didn't eat uh, from the top of the trees, so um, I, I'm just going to assume it wouldn't go for the very, very top of the pine trees, but I'm not sure it was even eating leaves. I'm not sure if we had traces of anything uh, regarding leaves on the one of the rare, if not the only fossil we have. I'm not sure uh, how many specimens we have, but I'm not sure we have a lot of them for this one. I saw uh, one reconstruction which had uh, stripes and uh, I really liked it, so I'm doing my own take on the ID. One of the ways people like to reconstruct this animal is by putting a sail on it. I'm not quite sure it works. I, I'm not going to judge or anything, but I I like the, the theory of the spines, the defensive spikes, better. Like it would uh, put its head forward or, or near the ground, so and the, the spikes would project in a way it would make attacks uh, a bit more risky. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would de deter, deter, I think it's deter, deter a lot of uh, attacks this way. I'm just going to quickly uh, do a sky. I don't want to be entirely blue. Um, let's say this part is blue. It's a it's a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day to be a Namarga Zorus. <laughs> and uh, going in this direction, uh, it's getting paler. Let's say uh, the sun. Is not very high in the sky. It's still the beginning of the day, which means I'm gonna have to slightly change the shadows. Once again, welcome to cha chaotic paleo art. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's easier when you when all your drawings are in 3D in your head and you're like, oh wait, my light ch my light source changed, so I have to add shadows here and there. I, I never imagine anything I'm drawing as a flat surface, so it helps. I'm gonna accentuate also uh, the shadow on the ground. Okay. There may be a couple of them in the branches. Alright, see you later. As I was saying, uh, I don't know why you'd think, uh, why, oh, think, 
say new, but I don't know why some people think uh, feathered dinosaurs would look less scary. I I'm sure some of them would look pretty uh, weird, but uh, it's not because something looks weird that it's not dangerous. I I, I mean, uh, have you have you seen a cassowary? Uh, <laughs> It has this blue and red thingies on its head and little eyes and uh, basically it looks a bit goofy. But uh, it's also the most dangerous bird on earth so uh, I'm still not sure uh, how I'm going to color this guy or this girl, I'm not judging. Pretty sure I'm going to do some counter shading. I mean, a thing that has uh, spikes like this. Not sure it's it wants to 100% camouflage itself or anything, but some counter shading would make sense. Counter shading is when an animal is lighter, where the shade usually is on any given day on the animal. Basically it means it's lighter uh, on the belly and uh, darker on the top. It may not look like a very effective disguise when you put it like this, but um, in effect what it does is that uh, the place where the shadow is and the place where the light is are not exactly the same, but they are uh, more similar looking and a lot of animals that hunt other animals look for shadows and uh, things that stand out against the background more than any other thing really. Even if you're pretty easy to spot, if you stand out a little less against the background, it gives you uh, some sort of edge over something that might want to eat you because you're slightly less easy to spot against the background and sometimes uh, slightly less easy to spot is enough. I still haven't decided when, how I'm going to color it. Um, I want to make some sort of uh, dark green. I don't want it to be green because I think it's boring to draw all dinosaurs uh, green. I'm going with, with some sort of tan color. Yeah, the stripes aren't uh, dry, but uh, I think it looks okay. So uh, we said counter shading, so uh, let's say uh, it stops there. And maybe it's even a bit uh, greenish brown there. And underneath it's uh, lighter. Not, not a lot lighter, but lighter. The paper is full of color, so it's having a hard time absorbing the new color and putting on top. But uh, I can be very... Uh, single-minded and <laughs> I want to do uh, this color in one go so you shouldn't do this I'm just being annoying okay next we're going to add some uh, inks once it's dry and um, I'm not entirely sure uh, what I'm going to do next because I was planning to add some uh, ink but I'm afraid uh, it's going to look uh, a bit too bright so um, what I'm going to do instead not really instead because I'm still going to add ink I'm going to add ink, but mostly on the bottom, I think. 
Once again, welcome to Completely Chaotic. By the art, we, we anticipate nothing and we are still doing it anyway, so... Oops. <laughs> this is why you di dilute ink. <laughs> In case something like this happens. The ink I did is very brown. I want it uh, to be greenish. If it's a bit yellow, it's it's. I think it's going to be all right. So mm. now this looks fine. Uh, okay, and dilute it, and there we go. Very very thin layer because I don't want to ruin the work we already did. Sometimes I just want to obliterate <laughs> everything I already did, except uh, the vague idea of the colors, but uh, this is not the case this time. I just it's insist a bit more on the shadows, but that's... Other than that, it's going to be very uh, thin and very quick too. Uh, this is uh, so far I managed to stay on topic. Incredible! Uh, <laughs> it's especially mir miraculous because I really want to talk about SCP stuff, but um, <laughs> I haven't so far. So I'm going to try to keep it that way. Uh, yeah. I think what's especially interesting with this drawing is that we, just with the drawing itself, uh, we can see counter shading in action, how it works. Because uh, you saw me putting all this uh, black uh, watercolor underneath the dinosaur, but uh, now it looks uh, lighter than uh, what's on top. So uh, now we are adding a bit of lights, and I'm not going to uh, add a lot of them. First, because uh, again, as you know, I'm trying to keep this drawing uh, simple. But also because I like this uh, soft green atmosphere we we ended up with uh, after adding this very light coat of green, and I don't want to ru ruin it with uh, too many harsh white lights. So I'm using a watercolor pencil. Uh, this is ivory... Uh, ivory, I think. Yeah, that's just... that's just ivory. Got confused for a second because some colors are actually named ivory something, including things that don't look uh, like ivory. Like uh, there's a watercolor shade called ivory black. <laughs> don't... don't don't ask me, I have no idea. Maybe there's a very uh, logical <laughs> explanation, but I don't know it, if there's one. You might also won wonder uh, why I am all of a sudden drawing bio art again. I've been tr I, I, I swear there's a link between those two things, but I've been trying to um, finish unfinished business, let's say, uh, before the end of August, because um, the end of August is the day um, where I'm going to work uh, at the office every day uh, again. Uh, currently, and uh, for the past year and a half, I've been working uh, almost every week, uh, four days a week at home which was extremely uh, good for my uh, health and mental health. I honestly, uh, I know it sounds weird, but, but uh, honestly, one of the best years of my, of my life <laughs> so far. Uh, very, very uh, good. I, I, I could finish so many projects and things, and uh, when the new year happened, I was like, I'm gonna use whatever time I have uh, in this uh, situation to finish uh, 
a lot of things I, I left unfinished for years uh, before my depression. I'm currently in the process of finishing uh, watching a classic Doctor Who. I've uh, finished listening to Night Vale. I, I was six years back uh, in Night Vale. I, a bit more than six years actually to listen to, which is a lot. A lot of episodes. Uh, and I did it, and I don't regret it. It's very, very good. It's still very good. It was good at the time, but uh, it, it's still extremely good. Um, sewing stuff, uh, repairing stuff, etc. And I also um, sorted my fossil collection. Uh, the ones I found uh, near the Falaise des Vaches Noires. Uh, in Normandy, uh, which is a place I almost always go to collect fossils, because uh, first because it's legal, uh, that sounds weird, but there's a lot of places where you can't uh, collect fossils. It's legal, it's uh, very easy to access, it's not very dangerous, it's... there's danger, uh, th the sea uh, the, the the tide is very dangerous, but uh, apart from that, uh, it's pretty safe. Yeah, so I I love this place. I have a lot of fossils from this place, um, and I and they were in little boxes, uh, shoebox shoeboxes, and um, uh, I decided uh, it would be better instead of having uh, one box uh, per per uh, expedition, per se. Uh, it would be better if I uh, sorted them by, let's say, family of creatures. Like all the ammonites together, all the, all the oysters together, etc, etc. Urchins. Instead of uh, having uh, five Boxes I have uh, free now, and they're a lot uh, more satisfying to look at. While I was doing this, uh, I was uh, watching uh, a lot of uh, PBS Ian's videos, uh, which are really good. I really recommend them if you like uh, prehistoric uh, things. Yeah, that's, um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make uh, bio art again. And yeah, I'm on this uh, uh, journey, mission, whatever, to finish a lot of uh, unfinished things before I end up uh, working uh, in the office every day again. Not every day, because I, I will be allowed to um, work from home uh, every Monday, which is pretty good. Uh, because basically I was able to prove uh, I was way more efficient from home. <laughs> and uh, even though they they couldn't allow me to continue working from home uh, four days a week, I was still able to obtain one day, which is, which is nice, I guess. Okay, um, I'm also going to put a light here, a bit of lights there. I want to suggest flowers like this. Um, the tail, the, the vertebrae uh, are very long on the back of this animal. This animal. Um, Probably because the neck, uh, even if it's a short neck, having a, a horizontal neck, uh, and you need strong muscles there, among other things. And I'm going to add little dots, because there's there's got to be insects and little things dancing in the air in this place. 
someone on the on another chat uh, told me, "Hey, why are you adding stars everywhere?" No, uh, sometimes I'm adding stars, but sometimes it's just, you know, when you look at uh, when you're in the forest and you look around, you see all little flecks of light and stuff in the air. That's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Um, going to sign it. Uh, and since there's plenty of time left, I'm gonna line art it as well, which I never do in these videos because it's fairly boring. But in this case, I don't want to line art everything first, and uh, second, it's going to be pretty quick, uh, so. I don't think I'm going to do the branch bin behind this one. Yeah, no, I'm going to leave it uh, like this. I'm going to do this one though. See, this is why I'm never fi filming this. It's not very interesting and uh, I can't really talk that much while doing it because when I do curves, I, I if I talk, I may uh, do it wrong. Uh, we, this is annoying because I want to line out the the Amargasaurus, but I don't want to line out the the tree. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but um, and um, this is a very very no somewhat small uh, sauropod, uh, which means uh, it was uh, about as tall as an elephant. <laughs> And uh, way longer <laughs> than one. It was a type of brother, brother that uh, ate low vegetation, middle, middle, low vegetation, unlike the dinosaurs with very, very long necks, which were more suited for the top of the trees. Which also means uh, you often had sauropods. In the same place, but uh, different species with uh, a different uh, browsing strategy. Since uh, the ones with the very very long necks uh, will eat the top of the trees, and these ones won't. Uh, they even if they are very very large, it's not an issue if they're living in the same place because they don't compete for food that much. Uh, some of you who are not paleontology nerds, like uh, like myself, <coughs> might uh, wonder why we do not have uh, animals that are that large nowadays. And one could argue uh, it's because uh, the end of the Ice Age wasn't great for megafauna, uh, one could argue uh, humans hunted a lot of megafauna to extinction, which is true. But the main reason why we don't have very, very large animals, like not like this one. This one is okay. This one is elephant size, and we have elephants around. But um, I'm talking bigger. The main reason we don't have them around is because um, m mammals uh, are, are not suited to become as big as, uh, I wanted to say reptiles, but um, more accurately uh, reptiles and birds. Uh, I don't feel uh, confident enough to give you the science behind it because I would need to to open a Wikipedia page uh, uh, because I would say stupid things otherwise are stuff like that which also makes uh, King Kong uh, an impossibility one would argue sadly, but uh, uh, 
there's other wonderful things uh, mammals can can do. It's not because uh, we're in the age of mammals that it's more boring than the age of dinosaurs. There's a lot of very, very strange animals too. I think there are strange animals at every period of time, basically. Uh, yeah. Um. Mm, okay. Decisions. Big decisions. There. I'm inking it, but not to uh, not insisting too much on it there and uh, going to define the foot thing thing flower flower yeah I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it like that uh, see you later.